Hello and welcome. I hope that you are having a fantastic day. Today is a great day. We're going to talk about Bitcoin news and in this video we're going to examine the Bitcoin wealth transfer. Now this is another in a series of videos we've been making about the Bitcoin wealth transfer and primarily what we're talking about is money in the real world transferring into Bitcoin. This time we're going to focus a little bit more on mass adoption. And so did you realize that Bitcoin is undergoing mass adoption right now? If you're not watching carefully, you'll miss it and it'll happen before you know it. It's done that with every technology that has had mass adoption out there. I mean, think about cell phones or smartphones more specifically. Did you realize that smartphones went through a period of mass adoption? Most of us missed it when it was happening. And in order for you to profit from Bitcoin's wealth transfer and the mass adoption of Bitcoin, you want to be watching and be aware of when it's happening. And so that's what this video is about. Now, should I buy Bitcoin now or should I wait? We're going to give you ideas to help you take profits and avoid losses. Can we get this video to 99 likes? Smash that like button. Hey, it really helps us a lot. Now, I'm not a financial advisor and this is not financial advice. This is my opinion. Cryptocurrency involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for every investor. And so I recommend you read the rest of this. This is, it really pertains to any kind of investment, but especially cryptocurrency, because we want you to take profit and avoid losses. All right, so we're talking about mass adoption. And in mass adoption, there's, there's a number of different phases. There's early, innovators, early adopters, early majority, late majority, and laggers. And so the, the, as you can see with mass adoption, the number of people getting involved grows dramatically. And then as it gets into closer and closer to the majority of the people adopting something, then it kind of slows down because you're approaching the maximum number of people that will ever get into it. So the question is, where are we with Bitcoin? Well, if you look at the percentage of people that actually own Bitcoin, we're still in this section. We may have actually crossed into the early adopters. It just depends on how you interpret and how you apply your own numbers to this. Uh, in my opinion, I still think that we're way down here because we're going to see, well, we're not going to see cryptocurrency is a global phenomenon and because it's a global phenomenon when you look at the number of people that are using it today versus the potential market we're we're way down we're way down in the two percent maybe five percent region in terms of a global market um, now there's spots in certain countries where that is dramatically higher but to the best of my knowledge, I don't know of a single country that has, say, more than 5, 7, 8, 10 percent, maybe 12 percent um, of the potential market already involved. So let me show you this chart. This chart talks about global smartphone sales over the last uh, a little more than a decade between 2007 and 2020. And the reason why I want to look at this is because it gives us a recent technology that has had mass adoption, one. And then two, the reason I want to look at this is because a lot of people are going to be buying and selling their cryptocurrencies via smartphones rather than computers. And so it applies to computers, it applies to Bitcoin and cryptocurrency from that perspective. Now I want you to take a look back here in 2007, 2008, 2009, we did not see very much growth. You can see here that in numbers of millions, it, uh, smartphones went from 122 million to 139 million. And so that's, you know, what is that? That's about 
20% growth because you went from 122 to 139, so you're almost increasing by about 20%, maybe. And then you jump from 139 to 172, so that's a, uh, an increase of about 30 million users. And so that's, you know, in the ballpark of 30%, 28%, somewhere in that ballpark. But notice this jump here from 172 to 296, that's more than double. And then this jump here is almost double. And here it's about 50%, 30, you know, 40%. And then here we can see it slowing down a little bit from 680 to 969 is about 30%. And from 969 to 1244, again, about 30%-ish. And so, so right in here is where you saw the biggest growth in terms of actual number of users. But here's what we need to keep in mind. When cryptocurrency goes through this type of growth, while we see the number of people actually using cryptocurrency, having addresses, putting money into uh, or, or owning Bitcoin in a Bitcoin address or on a Bitcoin exchange, um, the, the users compared to the price is going to be really, really different we may see the price go up much greater than the number of users. In fact, that's what's happened historically with Bitcoin. You know, Bitcoin was in the pennies back in uh, 2011, 2012. You could, you could buy Bitcoin for a few cents. And today, Bitcoin trades at, at $9,400, $9,500, right in that ballpark. And people are expecting, I agree with people, I think we're going to see a 50,000 Bitcoin in the future, a $100,000 Bitcoin um, at some point. So here's the, here's the important deal. You noticed how much Bitcoin has gone up in price, and yet the numbers are still very, very tiny. And if you looked at the number of addresses during those periods of time, the addresses didn't double or triple or quadruple. We saw an increase in the number of people having Bitcoin addresses, but the price went up 10 times. The price went up 20 times. Here's the reason why. On any particular day, there's, for the most part, most days, there's only about 5% of, of the total crypto. There's only a small percentage of the total available cryptocurrency even for sale. And so with a small percentage of cryptocurrency out there for sale, when people are buying up what's available, it forces the price much higher. And so it's not like you could take a trillion dollars and dump it straight into Bitcoin and see Bitcoin go up to a trillion dollar market cap. It's not going to happen that way. Instead, if you took a trillion dollars and put it into Bitcoin, because the people who have that trillion dollars can only buy say 5% at any one time, that trillion dollars could turn Bitcoin into a 10 trillion or a 100 trillion or a 500 trillion dollar market cap. And if we see that kind of growth, I mean, you know, that, that means that the price of Bitcoin would be hundreds of thousands of dollars per Bitcoin. So Bitcoin mass adoption, there's really two groups of people that are going to cause this mass adoption, institutions and retail investors. Now, to a large degree, historically, Bitcoin's previous price growth has relied for the most part on retail with a few institutions. But we're moving into a new era. We're moving into a day where we are likely to see every single institution out there owning some Bitcoin. Now, the global wealth, the total global wealth in the entire world is $360 trillion of wealth. And most of that is in the hands of institutions or wealthy individuals. And so it only takes a very, very tiny percentage of the wealth that's in the hands of institutions to move the needle very dramatically on Bitcoin. And we're beginning to see institutions make moves. Now, the same thing is, is, is true about retail. We still have 7 billion people on the planet. 
And out of those 7 billion people, we have uh, just a couple of percent that actually own Bitcoin. Now, here's the interesting thing. If you look at the global number of smartphones in the world today, there's 5.3 billion smartphones that people have in their hands today globally. And so with, with billions of smartphones out there, with billions of cell phones out there, the retail market alone could push Bitcoin to 100,000 market cap. It just depends on how quickly people move from the retail, you know, individuals actually jump in and purchase Bitcoin. And so time will tell how fast this goes, but we're beginning, if, if, you, if you can smell the coffee, you can tell that we're at the very, very beginnings of this. Now, there's a bullish case for Bitcoin um, as Bitcoin whales population tops a three-year high. So when you look at the number of addresses out there, the number of addresses that have, um, oh, what was the number? I think it was a thousand Bitcoin um, because it was $10 million worth of Bitcoin. The number of wallets out there that have 10 million Bitcoin has been growing exponentially and is at a new all-time high. It's at a three-year high um, above 1,800 over the past three months. And so the number of, and, and that's an indication of the number of whales jumping into Bitcoin because of the growth of those addresses. It shows you how many different wallets are out there that have $10 million worth of Bitcoin in it. So also, Grayscale has been growing significantly. Every quarter, Grayscale has been purchasing more and more and more Bitcoin. And we know from the SEC filings that Grayscale produces um, because uh, as an, as an exchange-traded fund, Grayscale has to report um, its holdings and and from that information we know that 80% of the investors that are purchasing the grayscale Bitcoin trusts that 80% or better of those are institutions and we can see by the amount of money that is that because these institutions are buying up the grayscale Bitcoin trust at a very rapid rate that it won't be long until Grayscale owns 3.4% of all Bitcoin by January of 2021. And so uh, right now they own, I don't remember the exact number, but it was somewhere around 1.4, 1.6% of all Bitcoin belongs to Grayscale currently. And they just keep adding and adding. And the reason why they're adding is because of the number of institutions that are purchasing their trust because every time they buy some, they, Grayscale goes out and buys more Bitcoin to reflect the amount of money that has been invested by the people purchasing their trust on the stock market. So if you wanted to buy into the Grayscale Bitcoin trust, all you have to do is go into your brokerage account, say your TD Ameritrade or your uh, Charles Schwab account, whoever you use for stock brokerage account, and you can find the ticker symbol GBTC, and that's the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust. Um, and you can, the, the, currently the ETF, I haven't looked recently, but the last time I did look, it was trading at around uh, $12 a share. And so you could actually purchase it somewhere around 12 bucks per share. Um, but I've always found it very interesting that, that close to 90% of the people that are buying up Grayscale shares are actually institutions. Let me also be real honest with you. You'll get better exposure to the price, the dramatic price increases of Bitcoin by owning Bitcoin yourself. But if you don't want to go to uh, having to set up, you know, the things that you, the hoops you need to jump through in order to purchase Bitcoin, and they're actually pretty simple, but some people just don't want to do it. They already have a stock brokerage account, so it just makes it quick and simple for them to purchase the GBTC token like they would any other stock. Um, so let's take a look. So we've kind of covered institutions getting involved and institutional mass adoption. 
Well, let's look at retail mass adoption. And so this shows you the number of addresses that are holding 0.1 Bitcoin. Now, some people might argue with me that those are not necessarily retail accounts, but you know, 0.1 Bitcoin is about $900 worth of Bitcoin. And so these are retail accounts that have a little bit, you know, because I, I know people that have a retail Bitcoin address uh, or they have a Bitcoin address. There's no such thing as a retail or not retail Bitcoin address. Um, Bitcoin doesn't distinguish between owners of addresses. It just knows that at this string of 32 digits, there's an address that exists and that address has X amount of Bitcoin. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. Bottom line is these are all addresses that hold at least 0.1 or more Bitcoin, which is about 900 to a thousand dollars worth of Bitcoin. And you can see the growth that that's been going through. So the number of people who have uh, one tenth of a single Bitcoin or about a thousand dollars worth of Bitcoin has been growing dramatically even through 2020 um, to where we're up to about three million addresses with those small amounts of Bitcoin. Now I, I wish we could say that that shows or proves that there's three million individuals out there that actually own Bitcoin and unfortunately it does not because a lot of people hold their Bitcoin on an exchange. I have friends that went out to Coinbase, bought some Bitcoin, and then they've just simply left it out there on Coinbase or Binance or Gemini or one of the whatever exchange they chose to purchase it, they've left it there. Well, when your money is on an exchange like that, the exchange doesn't create an address for every person that uses the exchange instead the exchange has you know one or two or five different bitcoin addresses and all of their bitcoin is located in those handful of addresses even though they may have uh, a million or so customers that have actually invested in bitcoin that'll only show up on the uh, blockchain as you know five two three four five ten i mean it just depends on what exchange you're talking about and how many Bitcoin addresses, but the bottom line is, is exchanges do not open up an address for every single customer. They have a, a handful of addresses that hold multiple customers' uh, Bitcoins. All right, now here's another one that I thought was very interesting in terms of mass adoption. Now, when you know with human beings we think in terms of our life and and when we look at our life we think in terms of what's happening in our neighborhood in our local communities we don't always think globally and bitcoin is a global phenomenon and so when we want to look at mass adoption we need to look outside of our own country and when you're looking at latin america Bitcoin is exploding. The growth of Bitcoin in cryptocurrency in Latin America is growing faster than it is anywhere else in the world. Um, it's one of the fastest growing areas. I should say one of because there's other countries that are nipping at Latin America's heels and Latin America could easily... Uh, take a brief stumble and have another country pass it up. But Latin America is one of the countries that's seeing dramatic growth in cryptocurrency. Bitso is a uh, cryptocurrency exchange and they have over 1 million users in Latin America that are using cryptocurrency and Bitcoin. And so that's a huge amount of growth for them. Um, because they only launched about six months. Uh, Bitcoin has topped Argentina's crypto market in the six months after the launch. And so they just entered the Argentina market about six months ago. And so uh, Bitso has not been around for a really long time. They're, they're a relatively new company. And for them to have reached this one million milestone of the number of users is significant. Plus, we're seeing a large number of people using cryptocurrency with a lot of other tools out there, such as local Bitcoins and a bunch of other peer-to-peer uh, -peer type tools, 
uh, uh, or software products that they install on their phones that allow them to buy and sell Bitcoin. And so BitSo, while they've had some dramatic growth with 1 million users, there's a lot of other companies out there that are also serving the Latin America market. And so just, just dramatic growth. But we're also seeing dramatic growth of Bitcoin in terms of the number of users in Europe. The German banks are now offering Bitcoin. And so if you have a bank account in Germany or some of the other European banks, you can now have the bank hold your cryptocurrency. They're doing a custody service in German banks. Um, in Switzerland, there is no um, uh, taxes paid for cryptocurrency. And so we're seeing mass adoption happening in Switzerland just because they can, uh, as cryptocurrency grows and they take their money out of cryptocurrency, they don't have to pay any income taxes like you do in most other countries. Over in India, the Supreme Court in India recently turned over the bank regulators because the bank regulators were putting they were they were overly aggressive in trying to shut down the cryptocurrency industry in India and the Supreme Court came down and said look you have overstepped the bounds of your authority you've gone too far and we're gonna push you back and you have to allow uh, cryptocurrency businesses to interact with banks so that users can transfer funds from a bank into an exchange and so cryptocurrency, you know, the Indian, the companies in India that service people in India with cryptocurrency and, and exchange software are growing phenomenally. Some of them are growing at 200% or more. And so those kinds of growth figures that we're seeing, and China is also growing through significant growth in cryptocurrency. We're seeing some huge things happening with the exchanges that serve China. And so globally, cryptocurrency is definitely on a growth. And then here's kind of a, a global overview of Bitcoin as a whole. Now, I know that Bitcoin has been trading in this 9,000 200, 9,500 range for a number of weeks and it feels like it's boring or kind of sleepy. But one of the things that I thought was quite interesting is Bitcoin's price recorded its third best quarterly performance ever in the history of Bitcoin. And so we can see that back here in quarter four of 2017, Bitcoin was trading at $13,666. And then near the end of the quarter, of quarter two of 2019, Bitcoin was trading at $10,059. But at the end of quarter two for 2020, Bitcoin was trading at $9,140. And that is the third best quarterly close for the price of Bitcoin in the history of Bitcoin. And that just shows us the strength of the current today's Bitcoin market. And so um, I think we're, we're, we're actually experiencing the beginnings of mass adoption. Anyway, that's my video for you today. How can I be of service to you? Do you have any questions? Do you have any thoughts, comments? I'd love to hear from you, even if you disagree with me. I want to hear your uh, polite disagreements in the comments section below um, because look, you know things I don't know. I know things you don't know. And when we share what we know with each other, we're going to grow smarter together. I want to grow smarter together with you. So please feel free to share your polite disagreements in the comments section below. In the meantime, do me a favor and like, subscribe, and hodl. And I hope that you have a fantastic day.